You may have noticed Idle Heroes isn't the only game that I make content about here on the YouTube channel. I'm a partnered creator with Angel Legion, and today I'm going to be talking you through the different things in Angel Legion that set it apart from Idle Heroes. It's very easy to take a look at a game like Angel Legion, or any gacha game for that matter, and see that the genre has heavy similarities across multiple games. For example, if you take a look at the summoning or recruiting area for this game, it's very similar to Idle Heroes, or even Summoner's War and other games of this genre. We have a way of summoning heroes that use friend tokens, we have a higher rarity item here which is called Advanced Recruit Devices, but heroic summon scrolls in Idle Heroes, and of course we have our basic form of doing this which gives a lesser chance of getting good heroes. On top of that, we have unique events, which you can go ahead and look at. This gives you the chance to spend money. There are monthly cards that offer gems, and also there are free to play rewards available for taking part in these events, where depending on how much progress you make this week, you can get yourself some really cool stuff. So overall, it shouldn't really be a surprise that Angel Legion, like many idle games, is really accessible if you have played any idle game before. However, there are some key differences. The first major difference is Mysterious Girl. She is a hero who you are forced to use on your team. This makes the game really interesting because rather than having people just running multiple of really overpowered heroes, you have to run this hero called Mysterious Girl. You can customize her in a really unique way where you choose her weapon, and her weapon gives her different skills depending on the item you choose. As well, you can level up these weapons, so actually focusing on one is really good. Another way the game is different is you can only run one of each hero on your team, and also heroes will act differently depending on the weapon that you give Mysterious Girl. For example, a hero like Time Jumper synergizes brilliantly when Maya is equipped with the rifle weapon. This allows Time Jumper to get an extended ability, as you can see when it says if Mysterious Girl is equipped with the Blitz Sniper, she will trigger the combo skill, dealing the same amount of physical damage as the above ability, but in addition has a 30% chance to stun the enemy for one round. So if you combine Mysterious Girl with these particular heroes, you unlock additional attacks. They have unique animations and get you extra abilities, which can make your team much stronger. Another key difference is that when you're fighting, you have the option of having two different ways of playing. You can go in auto mode, where you don't have to press any buttons, all attacks are done automatically, or you can go ahead and fight in a different way. You can choose to go in manual mode, where you can actually decide the attacks that are done by your team. I could, for example, choose the active skill here for Time Guardian, because she has enough energy to do an active skill. That should make sense if you've played Idle Heroes. However, I don't have to do that. I can choose for her to do a basic attack instead, saving my energy for a better opportunity. As well, there are items here called commander items that I can use to improve the fight in my favor. For example, this canister at the bottom gives me more energy so I can energy feed my heroes. Or if you look here, these big nuclear bombs can actually hurt anyone on the team. And oftentimes you'll do a lot more damage to the opponents than you will to yourselves if you get lucky. So using the manual options in combat can be really useful for giving your team an edge and making tactical decisions that allow you to beat game modes you wouldn't normally beat by using auto mode. Probably one of the most unique differences with this game and any idle game I've ever played before is that you can fully customize your heroes, equipping them with a vast array of potential outfits you can give them. Now for many people this is superfluous, just like skins in any game like League of Legends, they don't actually give you any stat bonus, but what's pretty cool is you can go ahead and customize their appearance as well. So you have options for eyebrows, eyes, you can even change the shape and style of the face, giving them different scalings on different areas to basically make any hero look however you want. This allows you to have that creative flair that then in turn you can use to show off to your friends. If you look in the PvP arena, the five most powerful people, actually you get to see their avatars. You can see that Lord Shocker's got a really funny face on his hero because he's gone nuts with the customizing. That's funny, some people choose to do that. Others try to make their hero look as glamorous or as beautiful or as powerful as possible. I mean, just look at Aya's right there, right? That hero in the middle, that's Valkyrie and she looks freaking amazing with that spear and that cool choice of going for that silvery long hair. So a very unique thing about this game is you can customize it however 
however you want. Another thing that I think sets this game apart from a lot of games I've played that are idle games is the campaign actually has narrative. There's a story that goes on, unlike in Idle Heroes where it's just wave after wave after wave of opponents. Here you can actually engage with the story, there are little cutscenes that you can go ahead and read, and it tells you all about the progression that you have with your heroes, and it gives context to the characters in the game. Therefore, it makes the game feel a lot more rewarding when you can beat another level, because it unlocks another part of the story. Adding to this, the devs decided this year to release an immersive cabin where you can go around and engage with the different characters in the game, mainly Maya. You go ahead and look, here's a little cutscene I'm in right now where Maya has told me she's accidentally fallen asleep and now she wants some food. It gives some personality to the characters and allows them to feel like they're real rather than just heroes you're deploying in the battlefield like some warlord commander. And probably one of my favourite features is that this game doesn't punish you for making heroes out of experimentation. Basically, one of the nice features is if you want to, you can go to any hero, go to more, and you can dismiss them. This gives you all of the resources back that you invested in building them, and only if you went and upgraded them to much higher levels do you lose only 10% of the resources you've invested. Another thing you can do is transpose your heroes where you use a currency which is actually pretty easy to obtain. You can grab it any event from the combat store here, and these transpose cards will only cost you 2,000 combat support, which means they're really easy for any free-to-play player to get each week, and you shouldn't need to use them very often. And that allows you to transfer all of the abilities and upgrades from one hero into another hero and vice versa, swapping their stats across, basically meaning you can change what you wanted your team to look like easily. This means you can actually invest in some pretty easy to obtain but low power heroes whilst you wait to get copies of the good ones without getting punished. And I think this is a really, really strong game mechanic because a lot of people often find, especially in games like Idle Heroes, you feel punished for investing in a hero and then them not being very good. You have to use soul symbols are really hard to get resource or you need to go ahead and lose all the rerolls you've done on stones or other things or it has to be only switched with a hero of the same faction. All of that is gone in this game, and all they care about is making sure that you can maintain all your rewards and resources. On top of that, any gold or force, which is the equivalent of spirit in this game, that you accumulate on this account, there's not really a way that you can lose it. You just spend it to make heroes more powerful, and also the assisting abilities those heroes have more powerful. Once you undo those things, you get all of that stuff back. So there is no punishment for using your resources. As well, it's very unlikely that the developers release an event that's going to rely too much on saving resources. So a lot of the time, people choose to use their resources straight away, and it's only sometimes we actually get events that need us to do summons. The rest of the time, events can actually be completed that week, which is really, really helpful. And they have options that are available to free-to-play players and heavy spenders, and the competition in the servers aren't too extreme, it's only really PvP that that stuff comes into play. Most of the time, it's just a campaign-focused personal RPG experience, which you can play for free on your mobile. So yeah, if you're interested in trying out a game that uses mechanics differently to Idle Heroes, I'd strongly encourage you to play it. And I know I'm sponsored by the company, and I can tell you that, and you can take it with a grain of salt, but at the end of the day, I really do think it's a fantastically made Idle RPG that uses mechanics that I think Idle Heroes could definitely take influence from to make Idle Heroes a better game for everyone. If you want something you can add to your free-to-play mobile game roster that you play throughout the week, why not give Angel Legion a try? Also, you guys can get some codes to help out your new Angel Legion account by going in the description down below. You can find a link that'll take you to a web page and some codes in that description as well, where you can put your account information in along with that code to get yourself some free rewards. So why not try out Angel Legion? I hope you have a great week, and of course, happy idling.